Fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination causing us to fear things that do not at present or may not ever exist. That is near insanity. Do not misunderstand me. The danger is very real. Fear is a choice. Well, Dad, can't I choose not to be in a Shyamalan movie? Denied! Now get your stupid spacesuit on, Jaden! Ooh, this is like being in Karate Kid with no karate. I heard that! Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it so you don't have to. Today we take a look at. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, God, no, not that one, not that one! Oh, oh come on, you keep so stupid, it's just a dumb, I can't get my do the flying, but then they're all. So let's take a look. Something important to keep in mind this time around is, unlike his other films, Shyamalan is not entirely to blame for this one. Will Smith's son Jaden was something of a rising star, so to cement his status, Will took it upon himself to write a story starring his son that would hopefully lead to a sci-fi franchise. There was just one problem. That sucked. That is correct. Oh, it sucked all right. It was reported that this film started out as number one on opening day, but word spread so fast that it slipped down a slot the next day, and was so bad that it slipped down another slot the next. Yep, the film was so bad that the public felt a civic duty to alert as many people as quickly as possible about its horribleness. But like I said, even though the movie has Shyamalan's seal of horrendousness, you can't ignore the ego hand job that the Smith family is obviously giving itself. For example, get a load of Will's intro over Jaden's narration. I've heard stories of Earth, a paradise, until we destroyed it. The founding of the United Ranger Corps 1,000 years ago was a global military effort, an evacuation of Earth. Dude, what's with the accent? Was your mother Matthew McConaughey? The aliens released the Ursa. <laughs> oh yeah, quick side note, did we forget to mention there's aliens in this world? There's aliens in this world. Quite pointlessly, to be honest, as we never see or find out anything about them. Hell, we don't even know what they're called. They're just referred to as aliens. It'd make sense if they had them be the ones that destroyed the Earth, but then we couldn't get our man anal flux environment message that I'm sure this film is the first one to introduce. Technically blind, the Ursa sees humans based on the pheromones we secrete when frightened. They literally smell our fear. So the Ursa, wait a minute, they named the pets of the aliens, but not the aliens themselves? Jesus, guys! Start wiping the human race out, but then a lone hero writes himself into the story. And that answer came in the form of the Prime Commander Sapha Rage. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that totally run-of-the-mill average name again? The Prime Commander Sapha Rage. Was Lieutenant Man Awesome already taken? Look at this shot. It's like the penis compensation of introductions. The Hummer, pickup truck, and convertible all roll into one. He's believed to be so completely free of fear that to an Ursa, he is invisible. Will, everybody already wants to be you. You don't need to build yourself up like this. This is like Hugh Hefner trying to convince us he can shoot lasers from his eyes. There's just no need. We're fucking jealous enough. So in the Nova training grounds, we see a young group of students wearing the same skin-tight jumpsuits that are pretty much worn in every fucking future movie. Don't pass him! That's Will Smith's kid! Oh. oh! Your test scores are very impressive. In the classroom, you are an outstanding ranger, but in the field, you collapse. Um, how? You never showed us an example of that. I'm not advancing you. 
Jesus, I've said this a million times, Shyamalan. Show, don't tell! Or at least have what you're showing match up with what you're telling. Based on the two seconds from what we've seen, how is he not performing well? Is it because he cut in line while running? I think an etiquette course could clear that right up. We then see Cypher Rage. <laughs> Come home to a world so clearly technologically advanced that apparently they need rubber bands on their chopsticks. I was not advanced to ranger. You were not advanced to ranger. I was not advanced to ranger, sir. As you can see, Cypher Rage, I'm sorry, that will never not be funny, is a man who has built his life around having no emotion so he can defeat the enemy. Except for this very strange out of nowhere spaz out. Are you asking me or telling me? May I go to my room, sir? Denied! Sit down! It's weird because he doesn't act like this at all throughout the rest of the movie. Even in scenes where he should be angry, he plays it very bland and dull. Most of his performance is like watching the dead corpse of Mr. Potato Head, yet for some reason he blows up here. May I go to my room, sir? Denied! Sit down! You will not make me have an emotion in a Shyamalan film again! I just love how a random act of no reason or logic suddenly looks futuristic as long as it's a hologram. I mean, what is she doing? We have no idea. But it's all sciencey and shit, so I guess we're never supposed to question it. Hey Tamara, what you doing? I'm just pointlessly waving my hands in front of these shapes. Is it a game or? No, no, just pointlessly waving my hands in front of these shapes. Oh. The future! The last visit to Ifitos. Flying tomorrow. Supervising training. And after it's completed, I'm announcing my retirement. Well, clearly you've retired from this performance, so I think it'd be a very smooth transition. Maybe I'll work with you. That boy in there is trying to find you. He's a feeling boy. Ha! He's an intuitive boy. I'm sorry, I've seen pet rocks that feel more than this kid has. He needs a father. So, being a feeling boy with a father who wants his family back, they decide to finally look the issue in the eye and confront it, even if it takes hours. Pack your bags. You're coming with me to Ephitos. Good talk there, son. Next week we'll talk about the death of your kitten. Oh, did I forget to mention that? He's dead. So before getting on the Blackbird, they're approached by a soldier who Cypher Rage <coughs> apparently saved in war. I was on the plateau. You saved me and four others. I just came from seeing my baby girl's face for the first time. As you see, it's bought no emotional impact whatsoever. Stand me up. That won't be necessary, Ranger. Then stand me up. Um... Will, could you explain why in your story a man who can still use one leg is in a wheelchair when clearly he should just be using crutches? Do not! Okay, okay! So while on the ship, Jaden walks through a toothbrush door. Cause, you know. The future! As it seems, they trapped an Ursa on the ship. Hey. Authorized personnel only. Might want to go easy on him, Sarge. That's the Prime Commander's son right there. Oh, well in that case, I better scare the living shit out of him. Maybe it'll give me a promotion. Your blood is filling with adrenaline right now. Whether you know it or not, your heart's beating fast. It's getting a little harder to breathe. Your neurobiological system is telling it to run. But your knees are too weak to move. You close your eyes and hope that this is just imagination. She sees your kid. <laughs> but Daddy senses a great disturbance in the doll. What's the last known position of the closest asteroid storm? 2,000 kilometers to starboard at plus 4-5 declination. I detected graviton vibrations in the hull. How? Graviton buildup could be a precursor to mass expansion. You know, I'm sure the actors on Star Trek have no idea what they're saying, but at least they act like they have some idea what they're saying. You sound like a Will Smith GPS. The pull of our own graviton weight could set the thing off. That storm could be on us in minutes. But sir, mass expansion is one in a million. Let's just hold course and hope I'm wrong. 
So, just to go over our choices, it's either alter the course slightly, or risk every single person's life on this ship. Well, the button's all the way over there. Engines one and two are offline. We're losing her. Can you travel us out of here? Where? The Anchorage, La Silla, it's closest. No confirmation signal, sir. Travel us now. As you can see, I've been trained to emotionally detach myself from any intense situation. Just don't ask to leave the table before finishing dinner. I will deny you. So they find the nearest planet to land on, which is of course Earth, as the ship is split completely in half and everything inside is almost totally destroyed. Except for our hero, who somehow doesn't have a single solitary scratch on it. What the fuck? Huh? Ah, uh, let me translate this scene for those of you who don't speak Shyamalan. <clears throat> Notice my directing! Notice my directing! I know there's a character and story you're supposed to care about, but notice my directing! What the hell is that thing even supposed to do? Ziplock your child actor so they don't become even more spoiled? The future! Oh, don't worry, kid. Papa Smith won't leave anytime soon. Yeah, as he just happens to be the only other person who survived this crash. What a fucking coinky dink. Confirm the S is contained. The back of the ship is gone. Rangers, count off. Mastodon! Pterodactyl! Triceratops! With both his legs broken, he tells his son that he has to do daddy a solid by traveling all the way across a shit ton of what the hell to set off the emergency beacon. Every single decision you make will be life or death. Everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans. With all that nasty wildlife out there, he gives his son the best firearms a futuristic soldier would have. Take my cutlass. Or a double-edged steak knife. Um, Will? Again, I hate to keep bringing this up, but can you tell me why a future obviously filled with these high-tech laser guns has a kid-friendly version of a Klingon sword as the only weapon to fight against giant killer animals? Denied! Yeah, okay. Take a knee. Root yourself in this present moment now. So inspired by his father's strong words, nothing can stop this determined, motivated machine of bravery. Except the spider. Ew! What happened? I'm fine. Oh, yeah. This is gonna go great. But it doesn't take long for Jaden to find trouble. My suit's turned black. I like you, but I think it's something bad. Sorry, that line was so stupid. Delayed reaction. What? I like you, but I think it's something bad. Who the fuck cares if you like it, kid? What are you, Coco Chanel? I think that might actually be the dumbest thing Shyamalan has ever written, and that's saying a lot! I like you, but I think it's something bad. Dipshit, fashion is not a priority here. Does Shyamalan think that most soldiers bring wardrobe appeal into their combat scenarios? Soldier, what is your status? The enemy has us outgunned and outnumbered, sir. What kind of garments are they wearing, soldier? Fashionably outdated VP cam boots, sir. Is their camouflage from the Ranger Joe catalog or the Rothko catalog? Ranger Joe, sir! Ah! Oh, don't they know that Ranger Joe is still last season? Please tell me your top combat's their blasé fashion sense. Sir, I've got on a black SWAT vest and a black standard issue top. What about the bottom, soldier? I've got a beautiful bohemian banana republic skirt with a pair of wonderful flower shoes. Do the shoes match, soldier? Do the shoes match? Yes, they do, sir. Ah, oh, good. For a second there, I thought we were going to be underdressed. I can't! But Alicia died backless. So it turns out the suit he likes senses danger. Danger in the form of bloody baboons. Do not move. Recognize your power. This will be your creation. <sighs> you know, Will, you could give the epic talk a little break and maybe speak a bit simpler. Like, don't throw rocks at them. Don't encourage them to get reinforcements. Don't make noise while swinging your bullshit stick. And don't run away, enticing them to chase you. I'm just saying, it might work better if you don't speak trailer ease. He outruns them despite how clearly slow he is and that they always just look a few steps behind him. And he does it just in time to listen to, I know you're excited for this, more bland dialogue. I'll go for my cutlass. Shoots his pincer right through my shoulder. 
Next thing I know, we're over the cliff, falling. 30 meters. God, I am so sick of this Shyamalan speak. The slow talking, the blank stare, the fact that nobody ever uses any goddamn contractions. We are all telling ourselves a story. I am dedicated. This will be your creation. We were not alone. You do not know. You cannot leave. Do not move. And he does not need a commanding. Or do not misunderstand me. Why are you afraid of the apostrophe? What did the apostrophe ever do to you? Did the apostrophe kill your family? Did the apostrophe have you co-sign on a loan that you knew you couldn't pay back? Tell me, Shyamalan! Tell me so I can finally start fucking understand the stupid dumbass shit that you put in your movies! God, it's so terrible! Cadet, you will get through this movie. I'm trying, Will Smith, but you just chose the dumbest ass director that you could for this project! God, help me get through this! It's alright, Cadet. I know the story's a young adult book for five-year-olds. I know it's directed by the most egocentric fop since Brett Ratner. But you will get through this movie. But it's so hard, Will Smith. You just made it so stupid. All right. Take a knee. Ow! You can run. And you'll live. At least for a while. And dying on your bed many years later. But would you be willing to trade all the days, from this day to that, for one chance? Just one chance to come back here and tell your enemies that they may take our lives. That's Braveheart. What? Braveheart. You're quoting Braveheart. The night is darkest just before the dawn. It's the dark night. Do or do not. That's Star Wars. Do unto others. That's the Bible. Do wa diddy. That's gibberish. Two plus two. That's basic math. You have nothing original to offer, do you? You are every wise, tough mentor that has ever existed in anything ever, aren't you? How about this one? Two eggs, a cup of sugar, a half a cup of butter. That's a recipe for cake. And yeah, I got nothing. Leave the story to the storytellers. Wait, I have two other kids to promote. Nepotism. Right? So Jaden makes his way to a cliff, which he thinks he can manage through, but Cypher Rage! Okay, I'm just gonna have a puppet me say it because it's the only way to fully embrace the ridiculousness of it. <clears throat> but Cypher Rage! Thinks it's too dangerous for him to jump. Abort mission. Return to the ship. No, Dad. <laughs> the hell was that? No, Dad. What, did Christopher Walken go through puberty backwards? No, Dad! No, Dad! You wouldn't give any other ranger that order! You are not a ranger. You're wrong! I'm not a coward! You're the coward! I'm not a coward! Nah. I'm not a coward! You hear that, audience? I don't need an adult to get me through a movie! Unless it's Jackie Chan, Keanu Reeves, or my own freaking dad. Twice. He jumps off gliding through the air until a giant eagle picks him up and feeds him to her young. Who apparently doesn't believe in cutting up her food. But because pacing is an urban myth in this movie, a group of mountain lions immediately attacks after he wakes up. No! Leave them alone! Yeah, come on, they were trying to eat me! So even though he tried to save them, the lions killed all the baby chicks, which means dinner for one, I guess. <laughs> or she just lets him go. Hmm, what was that line from earlier again? Everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans. Unless it's kind of ethically taboo. I mean, come on, these animals have appearances to keep up. Screw years of survival instinct and primal hunger, if word got around that this eagle killed a food source that unsuccessfully saved her kids, well, she'd just get dirty looks at her book club. Jaden puts a raft together after losing communication with his father and starts dreaming about his sister, whose death he felt like he caused years ago when he was auditioning for the role of Annie. I was just about to come out that day. No, you weren't. But you did the right thing. Why couldn't you ghost? You are aware you're asking that question to a ghost, right? Now you gotta get up. I memorized some of Moby Dick. 
Kata, get up. All that most maddens in torment. Kata, wake All up. All that stirs up the leaves of the brain. Wake up! She's a two-face. Like the Batman villain? If that helps you. As soon as he wakes up, he finds that his warm summer within seconds is transformed into a deadly winter. Oh, please, in Chicago we call that Thursday. He seems done for until something seems to pull him into a warm spot. As the winter melts the next morning, somehow not killing any of the green plant life, can I get a... Denied! That's what I thought. He takes a gander at who came to his rescue. Aww. I guess the eagle cared so much about being morally cleansed that she gave up her years of natural evolution that would adapt to the cold that occurs every night. We appreciate your heroic, totally nonsensical sacrifice. He finally comes across the ship where he discovers the emergency beacon. But, even more important, MORE GODDAMN SHARPIE THINGS! Thank god this ship had no firearms whatsoever in case their giant man-killing alien beast escaped. Oh look! Their giant man-killing alien beast escaped! <laughs> to make matters worse, the beacon doesn't seem to work unless it's on higher ground. And his father, SAFE FOR RAGE, is hoping he'll figure that out. But seeing how he can now see him but can't communicate with him, what does he use to point him in the right direction? Take a knee. The commonly known psychic connection between father and son. The peak. You must fire the beacon from the peak of that mountain. Okay. I guess you could claim this is all coincidence that his son just happened to take a knee when his father said and just happened to notice the mountain when his father said as well. But come on, we all know they're pushing some sort of bond that's connecting them across hills and valleys to keep helping him on his quest. Why don't you just put little wings on the bastard and have him go, Look! Hey! Hey! Look! Look! Hey! So he climbs the giant volcano to get a better signal, but is attacked by the Ursa who seems to just be a more cartoony version of the bug from Men in Black. No way to that! You don't get it! I won! Jaden makes it to the top of the mountain, but the Ursa catches up and thus Jaden finally gives in to what every Shyamalan actor eventually has to give in to, surrendering all emotion. I have been Shyamalized. I show emotion to none, but more importantly, care not for what anybody thinks about my work. That is the Shyamalan way. Will Smith does his interpretation of the audience's interest. is sent, an emergency team is sent, the movie takes a minute to buffer, and his father turns out okay. Stand me up. General. I said stand me up. Oh look, it's just like that earlier scene with that guy, who we now clearly realize was only in the movie to give us this scene like that earlier scene with that guy. Well, wasn't that so cleverly woven in? Dad. Yeah. I want to work with mom. Why do all my kids who film something with me say that? And that was After Earth, better known as Shyamalan Bomb number five. I'll give it credit that it's not as bad as some of his other films. I mean, at heart, it could actually be an entertaining kid story, and I think Jaden Smith could pull off a good performance if he had a better script. He's certainly done it in the past, but this is certainly not the performance, and this is certainly not the script. It reduces one of the coolest actors ever to a lifeless onion ring. It looks and sounds like every sci-fi film you've seen in the past 20 years. And just like most Shyamalan films, the pacing, acting, and writing are all pretentious, nonsensical, and dull as shit. It makes no sense, it's not interesting, and half the ideas in it are just friggin' insane. Especially that scene with the father-son bond. I mean, how did that add up at all? Critical. 
go to the internet and tell all your fans that the movie was great. Damn it, Will Smith, we're not even father and son, so even by your movie's logic, how does this make any sense? Through the magic of contrived Shyamalan twists, for you see, I am your father. No, you're not. Brother. Nope. Sister. Ew. Puppy. Not a person. French vanilla. Now you're just naming coffee creamers. Fine. I'm really... Shyamalan. Aw, oh, damn it. Am I really so predictable? How are you even here? I killed you two times! I'm Shyamalan. Nothing with my name on it makes any sense. If you want continuity, go watch a Linkara video. Ho ho ha ha! Ho ha ha ha! Why does everybody keep on hiring me? All of my work is shit. No, Dad. <laughs>